Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about the quantum numbers. Now these are coming from the solutions to the Schrodinger equation for wave functions and for the distribution of electrons around atoms. It's heavy-duty stuff. What you really need to know from this podcast are the selection rules for the four quantum numbers, and you need to know how these interrelate. And the best way to do that is to practice. And so we do several practice problems so we can apply these rules and hopefully get to know them really, really thoroughly. We're going to start by talking about the first quantum number, or the principal quantum number, given the letter n. Now, n defines the energy level of the orbitals, of the regions where electrons are likely to be found. But there are only certain values of n that are allowed. That's why these are called quantum numbers. Only certain energies, only certain values are allowed to us. And so the allowed values for n are the integers starting at 1, going to 2, 3, and so on, and in theory, all the way up through infinity. Practically speaking, n ends up being 7 as the highest normally occupied energy level for a ground state atom, but other ones are possible. You can go up very, very high. These are analogous for the energy levels that we talked about in the Bohr model. All right, And so we can talk about n equals 1 and n equals 2 and n equals 3. They're not evenly spaced. Um, you can think about them as rungs on a ladder, or you can either be on the first rung or on the second rung. You can't be in between rungs and actually be standing on the ladder. Um, two other things you should know. As the value of n increases, the energy of that orbital or that energy level increases. So if you're in the second energy level, you have more energy than being in the first energy level. And also, um, your distance from the nucleus increases on average. All right. Now, we can also get some other information based on the value of n. One thing we can do, if we know the number of the principal quantum number, is we can calcula calculate the maximum number of orbitals for that energy level, and that's equal to n squared. So if you are in the first energy level, n equals 1, the maximum number of orbitals you can have in energy level 1 is 1 orbital. If you are in energy level 2, the maximum number of orbitals you can have in that energy level would be 4. If you are in energy level 5, the maximum number of orbitals allowed in that level is 25. Now you don't necessarily have all of them, but they theoretically can exist. Remember, these are all solutions to giant math problems. And so we're just worrying about the results and not how we got to them. Now the other thing you need to know about the principal quantum number is that the value of n allows us to calculate the maximum number of electrons in that energy level. And that's equal to 2n squared. If we have other quantum numbers that tell us we can have a maximum of 2 electrons in any orbital. And so if we're in the first energy level of n equals 1, the maximum number of electrons you can have in that energy level is 2. If you are in the second energy level, all right, the maximum number of electrons you can have is 8. Now that doesn't mean you have to have that many electrons. That's just the maximum you can have. If you are in the fifth energy level, and if n is equal to 5, you can have a maximum of 50 electrons in that energy level. Again, you don't necessarily have all 50, but you can have up to 50. Now the next quantum number is called the angular momentum quantum number. It's quite a mouthful. And it's given the letter L, lowercase. I've written it here deliberately as an italic so you don't mistake it for a 1, which sometimes does happen. Now what L tells us, really, is the overall shape of the orbital. Mathematically, what's the geometry of that probability distribution when we work out all the math? 
Right, but it gives us the overall shape of the orbital. But only certain values of L are allowed, and they do depend on the value of N. Right, and so here's the selection rule, and you need to know this. All right, the allowed values for L in a given energy level range from 0 and all the integers up through N minus 1. Here's what this means. If you are in energy level 1, the only allowed value for L is 0, because n minus 1 is 0, and there aren't any other integers available to you. If you are in energy level 2, L can be equal to 0. L can also be equal to 1, because n minus 1 would be 1 in this case. And so you have two allowed values for L. If you are in the fifth energy level, L can be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 as our last L value because n minus 1 in this case would be 4. So we have all those integers that are allowed to us. Now L actually tells us, as I mentioned, the shape of the orbital. So I want to just run through the basics of this. Right. If your L value turns out to be 0, the orbital that corresponds to L equals 0 is called an S orbital. And S orbitals are spherically symmetric around the nucleus. They're shaped like a sphere. If L is equal to 1, P orbital. Now, P orbitals are not spherically symmetric. They are shaped more like a dumbbell with two, lo two lobes. All right. This is all one orbital. And it does have a node at the center in these P orbitals. If L is equal to 2, we call it a D orbital. And the uh, letters S, P, and D uh, were chosen based on a description of the shapes of the orbitals when they were looking at the diffraction patterns. D orbitals are shaped sort of like a dumbbell. They have two nodal planes in them. Right? And they have four lobes. Well, actually, most of them do. Um, there are also D orbitals that are shaped kind of like a P orbital with a donut. The donut is called a torus. Right. Um, and we also can have, if L is equal to 3, these are called F orbitals, but I'm not going to draw them. They're kind of hard to draw, and chances are you won't be asked to do that anyway. I'm not going to be worrying about that. L can be higher than 3 if you're in a high enough energy level. And so after the F orbitals come G, and then H, and then I, and so on. Our next quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number, given the letter M sub L. Right. Uh, I have seen textbooks that just call it M, but M sub L is really its correct name. What the magnetic quantum number tells us is the orientation of these orbitals in space, how they relate to each other in space. It also tells us how many there are in a set. Right now, again, only certain values of M sub L are allowed, and they depend on L. So the selection rule for M sub L that n sub l can range from negative l, all the integers up to 0, and all the integers up through positive l. Those are our allowed values for m sub l. So if l is equal to 0, in other words, if we have an s orbital, the only allowed value from m sub l is 0. What this tells us is this, that s orbitals are singletons in that energy level. If L is equal to 1, where we're talking about our P orbitals, or our P sublevel, the allowed values from M sub L are negative 1, 0, and positive 1. What that's saying to us is that P orbitals come in sets of 3. Right, there are three p orbitals in a sublevel in an energy level when p orbitals arrive. If L is equal to 2, the allowed values for m sub L are minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, 
and plus 2. This is saying that, well, there are, if you look, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values allowed for m sub l. What this means is that d orbitals come in sets of 5. So the p orbitals are orthogonal to one another. They're at 90 degree angles. We actually can call, talk about px, py, and pz. The d orbitals are a little harder to, to draw, uh, especially freehand. If you want to see this, I would do a quick Google search on atomic orbitals, and you'll find pictures. They're all over the place on the Internet. Um, and f, oops, I know what I need to do. Hold on. forgot something. I got distracted. Um, if L is equal to 3, the m sub L values range from negative 3 and all the integers up to positive 3. And what this is saying to us is that F orbitals come in sets of 7. So you need to know this. This will be important when you do electron configurations, but this is also what it's telling us. So when you do all the calculations and spread these things out, you can actually see how they're oriented in space. For the purposes of just knowing the selection rules, we don't have to worry about that right now. Now there's a fourth quantum number called the spin quantum number, or m sub s. Some textbooks actually just call it s, but m sub s is the proper name. It was realized in the 1920s that three quantum numbers weren't enough and they didn't adequately explain some of the diffraction data and the spectroscopic data that was coming in. And so it was realized that electrons have this property of spin. Now there's really not a physical analogy for spin that's accurate. Um, we can think of spinning tops, one going clockwise, one going counterclockwise. All right, um, but electrons aren't spinning on an axis with tops. It's actually how they interact with a magnetic field. But in terms of what you need to know, this will be fine. So there's basically two possible orientations. And so there are two allowed values for m sub s, plus one half or minus one half. And this is why we can have two electrons in an orbital. So we've gone through rules now. It's time to start doing some problems. And our first question is, What's the maximum number of electrons in an atom that can have these quantum numbers? So the first one is, how many electrons can be in energy level 3? That's really what this question is saying to us. Well, if n is equal to 3, we know that the maximum number of electrons that can be in energy level 3 is equal to 2n squared. And so 2 times 3 squared would be 18 electrons can be in energy level 3. Great. Let's go on and look at our next problem, which is definitely trickier. I had to go back and look at it a second time. If we are in energy level 4, if n is equal to 4, how many electrons maximum can have m sub l equal to plus 1. Well, we have to work this out a little bit, right? If n is equal to 4, our allowed values for l are 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, great. Now, if l is equal to 0, the m sub l is equal to 0. So um, the s orbitals wouldn't contribute any electrons this problem that we're trying to do. Now for L equals 1, the m sub L values are minus 1, 0, and plus 1. Oh, well that's one we want to keep a track on. We've got a plus 1 here. All right, if L is equal to 2, the m sub L values are minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Oh, but we've got another plus 1 there. So another orbital that meets our criteria. And finally, for, N equal, for L equals 3, the allowed values of M sub L 
are minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. But you'll notice one of those n sub l values is plus 1. So we have 1, 1, 2, 3 orbitals with a value of plus 1. We have one from the P sublevel, one from the D sublevel, and one from the F sublevel. Each orbital can hold two electrons. An individual orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. And therefore, the correct answer to this problem is six electrons max for this situation. So that's kind of a tricky problem, but you can do it if you know your rules and think logically. All right, let's go on to a problem of a slightly different type. Um, I take that back. If n is equal to 3, how many electrons can have uh, an L value of 1? All right, well, let's see. If n is equal to 3, the allowed values for L are 2, 1, and 0. All right, so we're looking at our L values here. Well, for L equals to 1, we know that the n sub L values are equal to minus 1, 0, and plus 1. In other words, there are three orbitals in the sub, sub level. There are three p orbitals, and each orbital can hold two electrons. All right, so 3 times 2 equals 6 electrons max. The next problem is of a different type problem. All right, what's wrong with the following set of quantum numbers? All right, so we have n equal to 4 and l equal to 2. Well, that's fine. Um, um, n minus 1 is 3, so we can have an l value of 2. That's okay. But if l is equal to 2, can we have an n sub l value equal to 3? I don't think so, because we know the allowed values for n sub l are minus L up through positive L. And since L is equal to 2, we cannot have an n sub L value equal to 3. So this is not allowed. All right, let's look at our next set. If n is equal to 2, all right, we're, we're given n is equal to 2, we know that the uh, selection rules for L say that L can be 0, and any integers up through n minus 1. Well, if n is equal to 2, n minus 1 and minus 1 equals 1. And so we cannot have an L value of 2. All right, let's do one last problem. Hopefully this will wrap things up for us. If n is equal to 3, and we're given a value of n equals 3, well, can we have a value of L equals 0? Yes, that's okay, because n minus 1 is equal to 2, and so this falls in. That's fine. You can always have an L equals 0 for any energy level. But we know that the allowed values for m sub L range from negative L through 0 up to positive L. Well, the only, allowed, the only value for L is equal to 0, so the only allowed m sub L value is 0 which means n sub l equaling 1 is not allowed. I hope you found this helpful, and we'll talk another time.